talk to me I really wanna know what you Hey, tea sippers good morning. Just wanted to thank y'all for y'all's patience. We did this call-in show like two, three days ago, but I couldn't put it up yet because we had to redo the theme song because as you guys know, the old theme song was talking about the green room. I no longer have that. I now have my own app. So we wanted to change the lyrics a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed the new revamped theme song. So now go ahead and enjoy the call-in show. Talk to y'all later. Hey, everyone. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, we had to move everything over, y'all. Y'all don't crash my damn app. <laughs> I can't believe some people showed up and the app, honey, was not acting. We ran a test run earlier in the day and people were able to get in. People were able to talk. But I think it was just so many people because when we did the test run earlier, it was just 100 they had to be like close to like 400 people on that app. And I just think it caused a lot of strain. So it just was not working. So we decided to move everything over here to Black Talk Radio as a backup. Because we still got to do this show. The show must go on regardless. So thank y'all for y'all's patience um, in letting me just move everything over here. So um, we'll be doing the call-in. If you guys want to talk and state your opinion on the topic, which is about Nikki and Megan, the diss tracks. You know, whose team are y'all on? How do y'all feel about all the drama that's gone down? Please make sure you stick to the topic. Um, but right now, like I was saying before on the app, um, Nikki's back ranting. She's on station head basically saying that Meg Thee Stallion, the whole situation with her getting shot by Tori, that's not how it happened. She's talking about, um, you know, Kylie putting her out. She's basically trying to tell her narrative as to what she heard happen. And if you guys do not know, Richard Kenka, who is Megan, the girl Megan's law, um, Megan Kenka, that's who the law was after. Her father is out now and her father is really upset. And the father feels like, you know, Megan had no business putting his daughter in this rap song. He feels like the song is very vulgar. And now he's looking to sue. But I don't think he has a case at all because one, he said he hadn't even heard the song. He only heard about the drama from his other children. But two, I feel like she brought more attention to the song. So it's like, how can you be mad? Most people did not know about Megan's Law and she brought a lot of attention to it. And it's freedom of speech. You know, the situation is unfortunate, but I don't think he has a case. I think, you know, unfortunately, he's low key clout chasing. So I want to hear from you. I'm going to start taking calls because I know it's getting late. So um, uh, let me start with the people who are on here the longest. And I just want to hear from people. Let's keep it respectful. But everybody's definitely, you know what I'm saying, you guys are able to have your own opinion. I want to hear from the Barb. I want to hear from the Stallions, you know, Barty Gang. Just whatever you think about the whole situation. So let me start with the first caller, um, area code 484. I'm going to go ahead and bring you on. So unmute your microphone. Hello. Hi, see, can you hear me? I can. And who is this? Hi, it's Dami Love from the Discord. Okay, thank you for calling in. You sound great. Yes. So what do you what do you think about all of this drama that's going on with Nicki Minaj and, and Meg and just this whole weekend was just nuts? Yeah. It's been a long seventy two hours, T. That that was a lot. I did not expect for all of that to happen because so at first like I didn't run to go listen to the Megan song. I'm usually the type of person, I'm like, you know, let me see what it's giving, you know, let me see what people are saying, and then I'll go listen to it. So when I finally listened to it, you know, all of those little bits kind of like, it flew over my head until people started to, like, really break it down. And I feel like a lot of people didn't know about Megan's Law until this song. So when everybody put two and two together, and then Nikki went off, and she's been going off like, what, 24 minutes after Megan dropped the diss song? And, you know, she could go off. She could do a diss track herself. But I think what is going too far for me that, like, now this is just making 
this whole situation like sideways, the way that the barbs are acting, you know, like there are some barbs, there's majority of barbs that's holding Nikki accountable. And they're like, Nikki, to be honest, that this track was whack, but there's mm-hmm. barbs that sit in here, um, like finding out where Megan's mom is buried. They're calling uh, different celebrities. Like I saw this one um, clubhouse, they called up Erica Badu. And they were like, oh, you friends with Azalea Banks? We about to run up on Azalea Banks, so she better stay inside. Yeah, T, they were going crazy. They were Eric- going crazy. They- Erica Badu was on the clubhouse. I don't know how they called her up, but they called her up into the clubhouse. And they were sitting there talking to her. And they had, like, no respect for Erica Badu. Like, they were calling her all types of bitches. She was like, all right, that's your second bitch. Like, you're not going to keep calling me out my name. Like, they were disrespecting her so bad. Well, you know, again, I've always been one to say that you're, the people who follow you, right, the people that you influence on social media, I don't care if they're a celebrity, Mm -hmm. a person, a rapper, your fan base is a reflection of you. Let's just keep that real. And a lot of her fans, not all of them, because, you know, there's some barbs that I do genuinely love and like, but a lot of them are very toxic, and they get that from her. She co signs yeah. for them to do a lot of stuff, you know. And, and right. at some point in time, it, it falls back on her because a lot of things she green lights and she hypes them up and she rewards them, you know, for the bad behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, when I was seeing that they were making posts to go desecrate, you know, Megan's mom's grave, I'm like, how did it even get to that point? Like, it should be on right. blast. How did it get to the point where we're, like, calling up – you know, grave sites and cemeteries, and it's just weird. Yeah, it's so weird, and she has the power to, like, stop it all, but she won't. But another thing to me is um, kind of like what Marquis was saying on the app is, like, who is around her? Like, why is nobody, like, taking her phone from her, shutting her down off of social media? Like, nobody in her camp has her back. Like, she is straight up spiraling. I remember I posted that on your um, post. I was like, she is really spiraling and she needs serious help. Like, all jokes aside, she needs help. Like, this is not, this is not like Nicki Minaj back in 2008. Like, I don't know who this is at all. Yeah, it's a mess. Well, thank you so much for calling in, sis. It was good hearing your opinion. Yes, thank you so much, T. Y'all have a good night. You too. All right. Um, area code seven seven three. Okay. Thank you for calling in. What are your opinions on the whole Nicki Minaj Meg Thee Stallion drama? This might be better. Sorry. Um, you know what? I, you know, I feel like at the start, because I honestly feel like Megan. I feel like she throws a lot of rocks and hides her hands. I feel like she did this with the party situation, um, mm-hmm. because. She, She'll kind of put stuff out there, and a lot of people won't catch it because she's not as blatant as Nikki is. And so I feel like a lot of people have this, have this misconception that this is just uh, Megan just put out this one little disc, and now Nikki is just going in. And I feel like it was probably well, a mixture of Megan. Megan has been sending subliminals for a while. They both have been doing it. Absolutely, and I, that's why I definitely think it is, but I feel like, and I feel like this is with me too, um, and I feel like maybe it's just me because I'm getting a little bit personal with it, but when someone talks about my family, whether y'all like Kenneth or not, that's still her husband at the end of the day. She picked him to be her husband, so I mean, it is what it is, and I feel like, like Nikki was saying or people were saying Megan didn't really have an issue with this until after she kind of linked up with Cardi. And so I feel like due to the situation, I feel like it's a little bit more complex than people are making it just like, oh, okay, Nikki's just going insane for no reason. Nikki is going insane. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with her. But um, I, I really do feel like it's a little bit more to the situation. I feel like um, – we are just trying to hand. I feel like a lot of people are trying to handicap Meg and make mm-hmm. it seem like Meg is just this innocent being and she don't do. It's a lot of worshiping of Meg. I see that a lot. Every you know, situation. You, you know, there's no worshiping of Meg on my channel. 
Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, mean, I hold her accountable. Like I said, I have really no dog in fight for either one of these women. But Meg is not innocent. She's done a lot of shady stuff. She's not a girl's girl. But ne- neither is Nikki. You know, and I think, like I said, I'm here for the for the rat, the disses. Like, I, I liked it. His, I thought Megan did good on that. But, yeah, they've definitely been trading shots at each other for a while now. Um, but I, for me, I really feel like this more or less stems ever since they hooked up and did Hot Girl Summer. And then Megan left Nikki and then hooked up with Cardi and did WAP. I feel like that is where this originated from. Because, like you said, before then, Megan had no problem hanging out with Kenneth Petty and, and Nicki Minaj. And then also Nicki Minaj had no problem with her until she connected with Cardi B. And and that's the thing that I feel like makes this whole situation really convoluted because Nicki, I feel like, holds on to a lot of tension. And I feel like it's from the whole Grammy situation and not her not being able to perform on certain sets or certain events. And I feel like she's just feeling like, She's been feeling unappreciated. I feel like, you know, she feels like we don't give her the flowers that she that she deserves. As far as this diss track goes, she did not do a good job. I was listening to it. I was like, ma'am, I know you tried to do it fast, but it, it didn't sound good. Um, but as mm-hmm. far as Megan's career goes, I feel like she's a really good rapper, but I feel like she needs to switch up her flow. I think the reason why Nikki survived this long period of time is because she switches it up. She does a lot of different types of music. She kind of gets into a lot of different things. And I feel like Megan, she's not going to have as much of a career if she doesn't kind of switch it up for herself. So I just kind of feel like this whole situation can be a lot better if we kept it off of social media and it wasn't so much like dogging of people's deceased loved ones. Cause I kind of feel like that's a little bit too much and talk about mm-hmm. each other's family is just a little bit too much. So that's okay. kind of how I feel about the situation. Well, thank you so much for calling in, sis. It was good talking to you. Yes, congratulations on your new app as well. We love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, she made a good point. She said that, you know, Nikki feels like she doesn't get her flowers. But did Nikki give those same flowers, you know, to Kim? I know people say that she did, you know, thank Kim or pay homage to Kim one or two times. But I just, like, for us who were grown when all this was taking place with her and little Kim, to me, it just looks like it's karma coming back. Because it was a lot of, like, shit talking in 2009, 2010. You know, Kim was old. Hang it up. And I think at the time, Kim was only 35. Nikki's 42, if I'm not mistaken. So it's like, people forget everybody ages. You know, and and be blessed to be here. That's why I used to always laugh when even some of her fans would be like, oh, you're old. You need to stop doing YouTube. I'm like, I'm the same age as your fave. If I'm old, Nikki's old. If I'm old, Drake's ass is old. If I'm old, Lil Wayne is old. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with getting older. But the problem is she was really going at Kim hard, you know, saying that she needed to retire. And it seems like now she's getting it back from these young girls. And let's keep it real. We now live in a generation where, a lot of these young people, they don't have respect for people aging. Hence why you have 10-year-olds at Sephora <laughs> trying to get drunk elephant because they don't want to get older. You know, so that energy that you put out there can come back. Or 720, excuse Hello. me, 720. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, lovely T. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Oh, good. Doing good. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, so I would consider myself a barb. I'm not a diehard barb. Like, I don't um, get super crazy about her, but I've definitely looked yes, up I'm to glad to hear from a, I'm glad to hear from an official barb. Yes, I actually like all the rap girls, like Meg. I love Cardi. I love all of them, and I wish, you know, in a magical world that it wasn't so catty, but I get the rap thing, but... um. It was a bit unfortunate because I've always looked up to Nikki the most since I grew up listening to her, so I always have, like, a soft spot for her. Um, mm-hmm. And I still do love her, but it is kind of unfortunate to see her um, kind of falling down this way. I don't know if if she is on drugs or something is going on, but it definitely seems like it's more than um, just a situation. 
I don't mm-hmm. know if she's like still in some way or something behind the scenes, but it's kind of sad to see. I was like, oh no, Nikki, like especially when she came after Meg's mom, I think that was just a super low blow. And it's kind of disappointing to definitely see someone that you would hold higher standards to um, going that way. Hello, hi. Hi, T. How are you? I'm doing good. So let me go ahead and uh, hurry up and say what I got to say. For starters, that diss track from Meg, she came for Nikki's entire existence. I haven't heard a diss like that since Remy dropped Sheether. I mean, she Mm -hmm. really was not playing around, and I was like, damn. And then I was like, all right, let's see what Nikki is going to do. And then my friends and I, we listened to that diss track. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, she needs help. Like this, I don't know if it's drugs or maybe something mental, but I'm like, she legit needs some type of help. Like I am genuinely concerned. I grew up with Nikki. Like I remember when she first came out, I miss the old Nikki. That's the Nikki I love and I miss. But, you know, Megan doesn't kind of help because, you know, she's very, very messy, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just being honest, just from what I've seen, like, she really is messy, like how she just, what you what you call them, the, uh, she's an agent of chaos. What I wanted to say about the whole Megan and Nick thing, both of them mm-hmm. not innocent in the sense. Both mm-hmm. of them throw rocks out they hang, throw jazz at each other. Um, but I come from the 90s, so when mm-hmm. she spoke about her, like, her deceased mother, that really didn't bother me. Maybe it was distasteful for other people. But you right. had people talking about um, killing kids, making sure they four fours don't, you know, your kids won't grow. Yeah, and yeah, hit them up. About people mamas back then. So, yes, yeah, so all that is just, you know, that's just, if you rapping, you rapping. You can't, it's no, oh, you can't say this or you can't say that in rap. So that really didn't bother me. Yeah, we all expected more from this this track. And the thing is, there were so many things that she really could have went in on Megan about. Um that she could have really put into that track. Instead of ranting about it, she really could have made it into a flow. But, yeah, she just chose to go on her big foot, I guess. All right, let me go ahead and bring on, because we're going to get ready to get up out of here in a second. Let me bring on area code 323. Go ahead and unmute your mic. You're on the stage. 323? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. How are you? Hi, babe. How are you doing? Good. Who is this? <laughs> this is Malibu, and I have something to say. Oh, yeah, Malibu Dollface from YouTube is calling in. So what do you think about all of this drama that's been going on with the whole Nikki Meg situation? Well, Nikki's been coming at Meg ever since Meg worked with Cardi for WAP. And we who got, you know, some sense have seen it. Mm-hmm. This is what Nikki does. She pays fake love to these girls that she really don't like. As long as you are beneath her, Akbar, Malibu Mitch, Katie Got Band, uh, you know, JT, she loves you. The moment you mm-hmm. start prospering, all of a sudden you become a problem. She starts throwing shade at you. But Nikki is a very calculating individual, and she's been doing this, and I've been telling you motherfuckers this, and she and Lil' Kim got into it. She will show you mm. fake love that the, the general public can see, and then she'll sit on Twitter and like shit from her fans that are talking shit. If you go to her like page right now, she liking hell of shit about Doja Cat and fucking Ice Spice, what they do to her. Yeah, they were successful, and now they don't need her, and now she feels away. This whole situation with Megan started because when Meg was on that live with her, Megan was being shady towards Cardi, talking about, yeah, girl, I'm going I'm to call you up, Meg, because I love you, girl, and you, you killed her, but we're going to call the thing a thing. Um, I'm about to go right. So Nikki thought she had a friend because she thinks that Cardi is the reason why she's no longer in favor. Cardi decided to be a grown woman and call Meg for WAP and probably sat down and had a real grown woman conversation and said, well, you know, do we have any problems? Meg probably was like, no, I was being childish. I shouldn't have did it. And they made history. Nikki can't do that because she's so worried about everybody else and what they're doing. She can't do something great either. So now she's upset and mad at Megan because let's not forget, right after they did Hot Girl Summer, 
Meg got awarded for Woman of the Year and who was up clapping for her. So what exactly happened? If you had an issue with your husband and her flirting with your eyes batting, then my question is why you didn't check her then? Why would you clap for her and promote the song after? What was the issue? The only thing that happened after that was motherfucking WAP. So at this point, She's been wanting an issue with Meg, and Meg was ignoring her, and now she finally got it. Because let's be clear, Nikki said four names. Meg said none, yet and still only one person was up for four days on a coke vendor yelling and screaming about how she going to fuck her up and her dead mama. Mm. So if it didn't apply, shouldn't you just let it fly? If you wasn't, if you didn't care about her, we've been waiting for you. She still has not told us what her issue is with Meg. If you notice, she still ain't said what the issue is. Yeah, the only thing I could gather from what she said in one of her lives or whatever on, um, on Station Head is that Meg was flirting with her husband. I'm like, so well, if Meg was flirting with her before. husband, so why would you promote Meg after that? Why would you promote the song after that? Why, if you the queen of rap and you that girl and you wish a bitch would, you didn't check that hoe when she did it in front of your motherfucking face? Why did it all of a sudden take for her to get on motherfucking WAP for now you to start talking? Girl, you know what it is. You mad because that girl has told you it is what it is. It's up and it's stuck. You don't want none of that. You sit up for four motherfucking days and ran your mouth about nothing and told us everything you was going to say, and that's why that damn track is trash. And she yeah. did the same thing she did with Sheetha. When Sheetha came out, what did she do? She ran her ass over to the Nas and got on her knees so he could take that shit down. What's she doing now? Oh, Megan said something about Megan's law. No, she should go over there and get sued. But let's not talk about the Columbine motherfucking shit she was talking about, talking about I'm killing these whole Columbine. What about all those kids who died? Since you care so much, you love Michael Jackson, but then you say you killing these bitches poker fall? No? Okay, then. So let's not do that. Let's not, if we're going to call a thing a thing, then let's do it. I find it funny that she's so morally great and she's so wonderful and she cares about people, yet and still you talking about a girl's deceased mom and she say, ain't said shit about your motherfucking daddy that was a goddamn speed bump, girl. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.